welcome to Bagpipes in the Barn. Um, I've come through some interesting things when I was looking for reeds um, the other day. I found a couple of old practice chances which I'd like to show you. I'm going to put some reeds in them and uh, see where they pitch. Uh, I've got an old cane reed here as well so we'll, um, we'll get into that later on. But here's one of them. This is a center and I'm assuming this was made in ebony. I think everything pre-war was mostly made in ebony. I may be wrong. I'm sure somebody will correct me. Um, this one is a is a much more unusual one. This is by um, Campbell of Trungate. I think this one's made out of cocos, judging by the the cap. Anyway, that's those. And here's Jeannie's book, Jeannie Campbell. If you're watching Jeannie, great book. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you, you know, it's, it's a really valuable resource for anybody that's interested in uh, old pipes. So, here we are. This is the centre page here. Um, so, it says here that... Um, okay, so from 1872 to 1881, he was at 1 Grove, Grove Street. Then he moved to 82 mm -hmm. to 86 to Grove Place, 86 to 89 to Morrison Street, okay. 1889 to 1895, Grove Street, he moves around a bit, and then 1896 to 1908, Grove Street again, but a different number. And after 1908, apparently he um, immigrated to Australia and uh, made some pipes out there as well. And uh, this is the second one. It's not much about this one. This is Campbell, and he made pipes at Tungate in Glasgow from 1875 to 1919. So there's not much detail in there. Um, it's you know he pa he made pipes. I don't. It, he maybe he wasn't a big maker. I've, I've never heard the name before. So anyway, once again, very interesting. Now with these chances the caps came but one of them was really badly split I think it was the um, cocos one anyway I repaired the splits and I've had them in oil for a few weeks now I'm just going to take them out now it's going to get a bit messy but there you go such is life They're really well wrapped up, this oil will leak everywhere. I really want it to leak in this bag if it can. <coughs> like I said, messy. There's one. This would be the cocos wood one. That goes with the candle. Uh, yeah, candle. And this one is the ebony one. So, I'm going to clean these up. Once I'm done cleaning it, I'm going to take a little break now. Once I've done cleaning it, um, I'm going to put some reeds in them and show you the different types of reed I put in and some um, pitch. Pitches, what pitches they pitch at. So, I have a meter here and we'll use that to, to figure this out. Okay, well, I'll see you soon. Right, back again. Here's the two. Um, trying to tops I had in to soak. Uh, this one had a little split down it. it. wasn't too bad, but obviously when you start playing it, all that moisture is going to go in there and swell the thing. So that was put into the oil as well. This is the cocos wood one, which goes with the Campbell Chanter. This had some terrible cracks in it, and I don't know what happened to that fell there, but. Um, it broke somehow. Anyway, I've got it back on there, I've glued it all up, I've sealed the inside and I've put it in oil. So hopefully that'll, that'll keep. I'm actually gonna, I can't imagine I'm gonna play them very much, but uh, so better keep my oil. This is a um, chanter cap from a um, McCallum chanter, which I use all the time, it's a long chanter. 
And if you look at this, you can see there's quite a difference in the size. This one's really quite big. It makes it easier to put reeds in. And this is plastic, of course, so it, uh, it won't split. Best way to go, plastic. Right, so I found an old reed, which I've had it in to soak for a while. Just blowing the excess moisture off of it. There it is. If you look down there, it's only quite thick. Oh, I don't know if you can see that. Hopefully it'll focus on that. Anyway, right, so I'm going to put this in here. This is the uh, centre. That's just under about 460 in the old charter. That's right in the camel one. That's what I've got. I've got sore throat. around about 4.44 in there so right about a well, here's the uh, Macau Enchanter that I use all the time and that's down to 2.30 so that's very interesting the modern the, the newest chanter the most modern chanter is playing lower than the old chanters, which is very interesting because when you put a modern reed in it, uh, it comes up. Okay, so um, here's one of my cane reeds. <coughs> I have the, I've had these in the uh, in my chanter for a long time. This one's about 18 months old. <laughs> so let's put it in this one first. I don't know. Let's do it the same way around. Put the center first. <laughs> That's about 484, more or less modern pitch. You know, the pitches come up. Um, so you could play along with a, a player with that. And that's, a, that's the old chanter with the modern reading. This one. It's slightly lower, but it's still in the, in the ballpark. And here's the McCannon. Again, that's lower. Now that's around 460. Again, no, yeah, 460. Awfully low. But that's the chanter. So we've tried these two. Here's a place plastic chart of one of my plastic ones. Let's do it in the same order again. B flat, almost four six six, bang on. Here's the candle one. that one, a little lower again, and this one, this is the modern uh, McCann. And yeah, it's a 440, so we're getting some quite similar results with the uh, old cane chanter and the plastic one, very similar. But that's very interesting. Um, Here's the, I'm just going to put this one together with the old reed. It's really quite hard to blow this one. Let's do the Campbell one first, because this is the narrowest one. You've got to be really careful when you put this together. Did you see that? I'm listening for the crunch. No, nope, good. Uh True scale. Let's see how much it's sorted by putting the cap on. Yeah, 
440. It'll be over 440 again. There we have it. Three different sounds from three different reeds, but they all work in the in the in the chances they just give you a different pitch. I uh, I must say I prefer the pitch of this one because I can play it on with, and it's much much easier to blow. And I can set the uh, set the mouth with this bridle here. It makes it easier or harder. Again, if you make it easier, it's going to go high pitched. Make it harder by opening the mouth up. It's going to lower the pitch. So you've got a little bit of adjustment there. Anyway, that's the end of that. I, um, if you've got any questions, just leave it on the YouTube comment section below. I've had some people ask me about um, how to blow steady, and uh, we'll cover that topic later on. But uh, I just thought it was very interesting to see these. Okay, all the best for now, and I'll see you next week.